All praises to the Most High, doing the will of the Lord. If you have to gain say, fast and pray and take it up to your Creator. Because the Word of God cannot be broken. God's peculiar treasure is not all nations. We're going to prove it. And you're going to see through the scriptures that all these people who keep saying they're the chosen one, he, God wants to put these people to shame. Who keep saying, I'm chosen, you chosen ones, and this, that, because they're not of all nations, kindreds, and tongues who are saying that they're chosen by God and they're not. And that they're his chosen people. And they keep using this scripture that they don't understand. Um, 1 Peter won't. 2 and 9 and God wants to put them to shame um, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and a holy nation and a pecu peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light do we understand a chosen generation a royal priesthood who's God's priesthood and who's God's holy nation and who's God's peculiar people so you know this is a nation God chose, there's a priesthood, and there's a peculiar people. This is not all nations, kindreds, and tongues. This is for a specific people. Psalms 135 and 4. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. So who is God's peculiar treasure? The children of Israel. The children of Israel. Who is his chosen? He has said it. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. And we're going to prove this from, from Exodus and Deuteronomy. Because God does not like the lying of these false prophets leading the people astray. And he does not speak to them. They see the real prophets of God, the real seers of God, and those who are anointed. And they go to their channels and they steal. That's why God said he hates every man who steals every man's prophe prophecy. It's in Jeremiah when people steal other people's prophecy that God didn't give them. And they steal other man's words. God speaks about them stealing other man's words, other woman's words, that he gave them no revelation. They're the goats. Exodus 19 and 3. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say unto the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, Who? He tell the children of Israel, Ye have I seen, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. And therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So who is this peculiar treasure above all people? The children of Israel, who God took out of Egypt. Now let's come let let let's let's prove this. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. What does he say? You shall be unto me kingdom of priests and a holy nations. So everyone keeps using this, this scripture, and it doesn't have nothing to do with them. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The children of Israel are supposed to teach the other nations about God. They're supposed to teach the Gentiles. The Gentiles are not supposed to teach the children of Israel because God never gave him that. Them that that is not their duty. We're going to prove this. That's why Paul tells you he's a minister unto the Gentiles. We're going to prove this. Deuteronomy 32 and 9 For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Psalms 147 and 19 to 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. So are any of the nations supposed to be teaching God's word? 
if they're not the children of Israel? No, the children of Israel are supposed to be teaching the nations because they never knew God's word. They never understood God's judgment. Let's read this again. Psalms 147 and 19 to 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statues and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit on him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Who's God's elect people? The 144,000. They're going to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel my elect. The children of Israel will teach God's will teach the nations. The nations don't teach the children of Israel. I have called thee by thy name. I have sur surnamed thee, though thou has not known me. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art a holy people. You're a holy nation unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. Do you understand that? Peter is not talking about everybody. Deuteronomy 26 and 18. And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. As he has promised thee. And that thou should keep all his commandments. So 1 Peter 2 and 9 is not talking about everybody. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people. What does God tell and promise to them? And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, and he has promised thee that thou shalt keep all his commandments. What does he tell you here in Deuteronomy 14 and 2? Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And even keep, we can keep going. Doctrine and Covenants 107 and 1. They, there are in the church two priesthoods. The royal priesthood. What There are two priesthoods. What? Namely, the Melchizedek and the Araconic, including the Levitical priesthood. Why first is called the Melchizedek priesthood is because Melchizedek was a great high priest. Now, before this day, it was called the holy priesthood after the border of the Son of God, after the order of the Son of God. Psalms 110 and 4. The Lord, if you don't know who Melchizedek is, he's spoken of in Genesis 14 and 18, and he's spoken of in Psalms 1, 10 and 4, what I'm going to read. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Genesis 14 and 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Alma 13 and 6. And thus being called by the holy calling and ordained unto them the priesthood of the holy order of God, the children of Israel, to teach his commandments unto the children of men. Who is supposed to teach the commandments of God unto the children of men? The children of Israel. Because God gave it to them, not to all these people. That they might, that they also might enter into his rest so they could enter in his rest because the children of Israel understand the scriptures of God. God talks to them. This high priesthood being after the order of his son, which order was from the foundations of the world. When did this, this order of the priesthood was from the foundation of the earth, world. So these people can't say that they're chosen to do this. Chosen ones. No, you're lying. Or in other words, being without beginning of days or end of years being prepared from eternity to all eternity according to his foreknowledge of all things. Now they were ordained after this manner being called with a holy calling 
and ordained with a holy ordinance. So all the children of Israel have their own holy calling from God. And they're all ordained to do something from God with a holy ordinance. They all have what they're supposed to do. And taking upon them the high priesthood of the holy order, which calling and ordinance and high priesthood is without beginning or end. Thus they became priests, high priests forever, after the order of the Son, the only begotten of the Father, who is without beginning of days or end of years, who is full of grace, unity, and truth. And thus it is. Amen. Now, as I said concerning the holy order and the high priesthood, there were many who were ordained and became high priests of God. And it was on account of their exceeding faith and repentance and their righteousness before God. They chosen to repent and work righteousness rather than to perish. Now, to prove even more that, what does Paul say? Romans 15 and 16. That I should be the minister of Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Acts 15 and 19. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble the, not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. So we're, the children of Israel are not supposed to be racist to any other Gentile. To anybody who turns from wickedness to turn to God. Any of the Gentiles who turn to God. The children of Israel are not supposed to trouble them. Romans 15 and 12. And again Isaiah says... There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Romans 3 and 29. He is the God of the, is he the God of the Jews only? No. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. But the Gentiles are not supposed to teach God's word. The children of Israel are supposed to teach the Gentiles. Acts 9 and 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. God tells the children of Israel, I will raise up one among you from their own people to teach them. But these also, this one, he, what, he was chosen. He was a cho Christ chose him to be a vessel to bear his name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So not all the children of Israel believe the name of Christ. They all have all their different names for Christ. Ephesians 3 and 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Romans 15 and 10. And again, he says, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Acts 13 and 47, For so has the Lord commanded us, saying, I have sent thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shalt be for salvation unto the ends of the earth, to teach them so the Gentiles could get salvation as well. Revelations 11 and 2. And I'm going to stop here. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out... And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So do you know when it describes God's temple, it says, This is for the children of Gad, the children of Israel, the children of Judah, the children. This is there's a part of the temple of God that's given for, to the Gentiles. They have their own part. And that is to show you. Many are called, few are chosen, and this not everybody is a part of God's royal priesthood and his chosen generation and his peculiar treasure because his peculiar treasure is the children of Israel. His holy priesthood is the children of Israel. Stay blessed and take this up of fasting.